Hi, this is Chandler from the FTC Team 6299 Basketball Squad X. Today I am making a tutorial on the basics of cam and how to cam a part to be CNC'd on a router. So you're going to start off, I'm going to be teaching this in Autodesk Inventor. Um, HSM also works for SOLIDWORKS, but I'm going to be very specifically showing it in Inventor. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is head over to Autodesk and uh, their products in HSM. Uh, you can download this for free if you're a student, or if you want to pay for it, you can do that too. The installation is super simple. You just install it like all the other Autodesk programs do. So once you have HSM installed, you can actually begin camming your part. I'm going to be using our 2017-2018 Rescue Robot as an example. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you how to CNC is one of our wheel panels on our robot. Uh, it's a pretty good example just because it has screw holes that are also countersunk, uh, bearing holes inside of the piece and the entire piece itself. So once you have your piece, uh, you're going to see this new tab at the top called CAM. This is where we're going to have all of our new tools in. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, setting it up. So we're going to press setup right here. And the first thing we're going to do is select our origin point. So this is where the CNC is going to start. Um, and it just helps you know where to put it, especially if you're on a limited piece of wood or aluminum, or if you have a limited size router. I like to go with a corner top piece. It just makes the most sense for me. Uh, you can really do whatever you feel is best. So as you can see here, the um, z-axis is actually um, on one of the horizontal axis, uh, which is not something we want. That's not how we would CNC this part. So. Uh, over here where it says work coordinate system, I'm just going to under orientation select the Z axis and the X axis just so I can select what I want them to be. So right now I am currently selecting the Z axis so I want it to be here and then I'm going to select my X axis which I want to be here. After that, uh, since we set up the origin we're going to go to the stock. Uh, stock is the actual size of the part. Um, it automatically puts a 0.4 offset. I have never had a reason to use them and personally don't know why you would need them, but in case you ever do need a certain offset on the side or top, um, here is where the option is. So once we've done all that, we're just going to press OK and you'll see this new side panel opened up where it says Setup and um, it's different from your uh, extrusions or holes and stuff like that where they would normally be. So when you're camming a part, especially a part that's a bit more complicated than others, you really have to get the order of operations down for the part itself. Um, what I always do is I start with drilling any basic holes, such as these ones, um, because that just requires the bit to go straight in and straight out of the wood. Then I move on to my uh, embedded holes, so uh, these surrounding ones, because the bit does have to move, but it's still a relatively small piece of it. And then I move on to uh, uh, bigger holes and then the very last thing I do is the part itself so really general rule is you just want to start from the most basic part and smallest to the largest so to do all the features of the parts uh, here at the top we have all these different tools now I've only ever used the drill tool uh, the 2d pocket tool and the 2d contour tool but there are reasons to use the others I've just never found them um, so, like I said, we're going to start off with uh, drilling. So, I'm going to select the drill tool here, and this will pull up uh, all your settings for the drill itself. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to just start selecting each of my holes. Uh, you want to make sure to only select the center one. It doesn't entirely matter, but if for some reason your hole on the top is slightly offset, it'll center with that instead of the main hole. Okay, so after I've selected all of these holes, it looks something like this. And this yellow line is the path that the mill is actually going to, or sorry, the router is actually going to follow. So it's going to start here, 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 and so on. So it lets you see exactly what it's going to do, and it usually does uh, take the fastest path that it can find. Um, so after I've selected all the holes, I'm going to come back over here and select what tool I'm going to be using. Now this is very important, you need to know what type of tool your uh, router is going to be using. Um, 
I know on our router we normally use a 1 8 inch uh, flat bit, but this could differ. Uh, it has a lot of tools already in, and if you need to, you can create a new middle tool down in the bottom left. So I'm just going to select my uh, flat tool. And once you do that once, for the, you only have to do it for the uh, first feature, unless you plan on switching the tool that you use halfway through. So after, after I've selected my tool, you usually don't need to do all these feeds, uh, feed and speed settings. Um, I know we have never with our router, but your router may be different, so you might want to look that up. Um, then over here, we have our actual heights of it. So this is more in-depth on what the uh, router is going to do. We have a clearance height, which is just uh, how high it goes up to move from each piece so it doesn't accidentally hit something. Uh, retract height, this is more used uh, for when you're doing contours because you don't want it to go the whole depth at a time. It comes out that much each time. Uh, feed height, uh, I've never used. Um, top height is uh, the top of your part, and then bottom height is the bottom of your part. So when you're doing this, you normally want, especially with holes, to set a uh, much larger bottom height than it actually is, because of the fact that um, the C uh, CNC could be slightly off, and um, one side could be lower, so it, uh, the hole may not actually drill all the way through. So it's just a safe rule of thumb to go a bit deeper. I usually go about 0.08. And I think I went the wrong way. Okay, so yeah, 0 0.08. And I usually like to select uh, stock bottom. Uh, it's negative 0.08. Uh, stock bottom, just because uh, as if I know the hole is supposed to go all the way through, um, it just keeps any issues that could have happened when you actually catted the part. So now that I've set all that up, um, I'm just going to press OK and that'll finish uh, my drill part. If you want to look to make sure it looks right before you continue, you can press the simulate button in the top left and press play and it'll show you the bit going along the path and doing whatever you told it to do. So now that we've set up all of our holes, we're going to set up um, all of the embedded parts of the hole, uh, screws. So for that, we're going to use the 2D contour tool. Uh, and this works pretty much the same as the drill tool uh, for selecting, although uh, the settings are slightly different. So this is a pretty important step. Once you have all of your holes selected, you'll see they all have this arrow. This arrow is just the direction the, um, the bit goes around that hole. So like the last piece, uh, it has all of these settings in it. Now, something different and very important about this is the fact that we don't actually want these to go all the way through, or else it's not going to be the correct size for our screw. So you could, uh, for the bottom height, you selected contours. Or uh, if you know the depth of the hole itself, you could just say uh, like stock top with um, an offset. So for this, I'm just going to do uh, stock top with an offset, just because uh, to me it's really the easiest. So I'm going to set the offset to negative negative point. One five, which I know is the depth of those holes, and then uh, go to the next part, which is the <coughs> uh, passive area. So this uh, determines how many times the bit actually goes around the hole. Um, so you usually don't want the bit to just go straight through the wood and cut out in one go. Uh, that makes the bit wobble a lot more and makes a much more inconsistent um, cut. It also uh, brings up the possibility of actually breaking the bit by a lot. So uh, to fix this, we're going to, on the left over here, um, we're going to go down to multiple depths and check that. And then right here where it says maximum roughing step down, I usually use uh, 0.06, but you could go up to something like 0.08. 
once we have that selected, um, you really don't need to mess with anything else. Uh, once you have that selected, uh, you press OK, and then it'll compute that, and we can watch it simulate. Press Start. You'll see for each of these it's going in a few times, and then coming back out. So now that we've got all of our screws embedded, I'm going to start doing the holes for our bearings. Uh, I'm going to go to the 2D contour tool, uh, tool just like uh, we did last time for the uh, embeds, embedded screws. And I'm just going to select both of these two holes. Now, you might be tempted to also do this outer piece since it is also a 2D contour and will have the exact same settings. But I'd really suggest not doing that just in case the CNC decides to do that first. It'll pop your piece out and um, most likely mess it up. So like the last one, we're going to want to go to passes, uh, do multiple depths, and turn this up to whatever you prefer. Um, I'm just doing 0.08 for this video to make it a bit quicker, but if you want more accuracy, you probably want to um, go down to 0.06. So after we've uh, done our step downs, we're going to go back to our heights, uh, select our bottom height, and like last time, I'm gonna like uh, at the beginning with the holes, I'm gonna go back to stock bottom and set it to a negative point oh six, just so oh negative point oh six, just so that it goes deeper, so I make sure it actually does cut out the holes. After that, for the final part, and this is the last thing you always want to do, is cut out the piece itself. Now, if you did have a piece that had a bigger hole in the middle, you would want to do that second to last, but you still always want to do the outer part first. So for that, we're going to use a 2D contour, select the top, and then do the exact same thing as the bearing holes. So I'm going to go to stock height, or heights, uh, bottom height, stock bottom, set this to a negative 0.06 go to passes, select multiple depths, and turn this up to uh, 0.08, and then press OK. And if you, ha if you noticed, I haven't actually needed to select a tool for the past uh, few steps. That's just because in the first one, once you do select your tool, um, it does uh, stay the same throughout the rest of the setup. So once you have finished your setup, I would always suggest running through a simulation of the entire thing. It is a bit boring, but it helps you not waste wood or possibly risk breaking something on your CNC. So uh, I'm just going to select Setup so that it actually does the entire piece, because if I'm only selecting on one, it'll only do that part. So I press Setup and Simulate, and I'm going to watch it go through the entire motions. As you can see, it's starting over here now it believes that is the best and uh, right here at the bottom you can see these uh, different color coded areas that's just the different sections so this first one is drill drilling this one is the uh, embedded screws this is the bearings and this is the final piece so as you can see it's just going around each one and uh, the red lines are uh, the transfer lines so uh, between each of the different um, parts down here it's line will follow and now it's just doing the last part and if you look here you can see it's going to go an entire step down before it um, finishes just to make sure the part comes out so the final thing to do before you can actually see and see your part is uh, post process so first you want to make sure you have setup uh, selected no matter if you name this it's probably named setup one I've just uh, done multiple setups on this part before uh, I'm going to go to post process and then in here um, you're going to need to know um, what settings you want. I have never changed any of them so you probably won't but just in case uh, you might mess them up. Uh, these are my settings. I've never had any issues with them. Uh, so first we're just going to name it. I'm going to call this test. Uh, you can comment. That's not really uh, needed. Then I'm going to press post and save and that will create a NC file and it'll automatically open up um, I'd suggest just scrolling down to make sure it does look long if it 
you look and it's only a hundred lines, there's probably something wrong somewhere, and that usually means you didn't select uh, setup right here when you press post process. So that's all for camming apart. Um, the scene seems much different, and I will make another tutorial on that uh, that should be on the channel.